Hello everybody, uh, I'm super glad to be here with you, uh, live from uh, Lockdown Paris, uh, with, with Lucy. How are you, Lucy? <laughs> Hi, Francois, doing great, thank you. Awesome. Um, so today we are going to, to, to talk about uh, search engine optimization, uh, SEO. Um, so, so this talk is going to be, uh, to be structured in, the, in, in this way. We are going to, to start to talk with, about uh, SEO with traditional CMSs, like WordPress and Drupal. Uh, then uh, talking about modern framework and how it, 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 it has uh, influenced the, the SEO uh, strategy of companies. And uh, finally, the best practices for SEO with uh, headless CMSs. So um, also we have a poll uh, live. Uh, if you can just uh, check it out, it's about uh, how experienced you are with SEO. Uh, it would be cool if you can just take a look. So um, today I'm joined with Lucy, as I said, uh, Lucy, you're part of the, the developer experience team. Yeah. Uh, me, myself, I'm a solution architect here at Prismic. So basically, uh, I'm talking with clients, uh, with users, and help them to implement Prismic uh, in the best way. So um, we talk with, with users and, uh, and clients on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis. And, and a recurring question that we have is uh, a question about SEOs. So uh, for many of our clients, uh, Google is not only uh, a search engine, but it's al also like a, a growth engine. So as you may know, um, the, the Google algorithm is quite complex. There is more than, than 200 factors uh, that are taking, uh, taken into account to, to rank your website. So today we are not going to talk about uh, growth hacking and stuff like that uh, because we don't want to trick it. Uh, because we are sure on one thing here at Prismic is that the content and the quality of the content is key for your SEO strategy. So um, as a CMS provider, we are in the, in the center of that uh, SEO strategy because basically you are going to write your content and to produce it in Prismic. Uh, we are going to host it and deliver it to, through an API. So um, today this session will focus mainly on technical uh, on-page SEO best practices. So the goal of the session is how can you make sure that the content that you or your content editor is, are going to write is going to be um, discoverable and optimized for the search engine bots? So uh, we're going to take a step back and talk about how SEO was handled in the past with traditional C CMSs like WordPress and Drupal. What do you think, uh, yeah. Lucy? Well, let's rewind a bit and like uh, reflect on like how we are used to handle SEO like as a developer with WordPress or Drupal, like basically like monolithic CMSs. So how was it working is that if we take like the most popular one, WordPress, of course, like SEO was just like about like throwing a plugin in your configuration. So uh, basically like, I think like if you remember WordPress, like we used to use like Yoast SEO, which is like a really powerful plugin, which was only like for us developer, like all the OS SEO thing, like for our website and even like helping our content writer achieving like great content within our, our, our old WordPress CMSs. So this was great. It was giving us like a lot of guidelines and things like that. It was doing like all the comp complex like meta tags and things like that. And uh, that was like a cool thing about this monolithic structure using with WordPress. But also like because WordPress was a monolithic structure, like um, it has like also like some drawback uh, due to that. So we are we are all aware of uh, the plugin L on WordPress. Like it tends like the more plugin you add, the more it's difficult like to perform upgrade. The more plugin you add, it's also like uh, your website has then a tendency to become like uh, laggy or like has less being less performance. And while that's like the drawback of WordPress and uh, you having your website less performance is uh, is uh, nowadays like uh, even more like a concern because like uh, Google just introduced uh, web code vi core web vitals and uh, this is like a uh, new metrics that Google will take into account tomorrow uh, to uh, rank your website based on performances and uh, user experience. Yes, right. So Google like uh, officially uh, told us that they are going to take performances and user experience uh, as part of the ranking factor. So it, it, it's really interesting to to think about it that way because it was known to be uh, to be factors in the past, but now it's official. So uh, also what we are seeing today is that people are accessing uh, content through multiple devices. Uh, it could be laptops, it could be smartphones, it could also be uh, vocal uh, assistants. Yeah, and that's a really great thing because like if we switch to using modern frameworks nowadays, which comes with like all these performance things that Google is now looking for when uh, evaluating our website, 
is that we are basically like decoupling like uh, from the monolithic approach decoupling to like uh, the fr having the front end on one side the back end on another side so you can have like your website built with react and have an application built with flutter for example for your website and even have like uh, an alexa api like to answer questions on alexa device or google home and everything so that's really great because like it empowers us developers to uh, choose the technology the technology that we'd like to work with for the front end but also for the back end Indeed, like we can now like pick in the backend, like uh, we have like a lot of uh, services of software on. So for managing content, you have Prismic, of course, you have others, but also like if you want to manage assets, like you have Cloudinary, you have Imagix. If you want to manage forms, you have like uh, Typeform, for example. Like there's a lot of tools that we can now use as developer to like just provide us the best experience, like developing the website, but also provide our like marketing team the best experience, like uh, doing their job as a marketing team. <laughs> This is um, also like, but, but yeah, so basically like we have a lot of shows now as a developer, we can work like with the technology we like to work with. But the, the drawback of that is that um, it's now our job as a developer like to make the link between like us versus technology. So we have to link the front and the back, we have to link like all the services we are using together. So it's uh, it brings like to us like a lot of, uh, of things to do. And SEO is one of them because like we don't have Yoast SEO anymore on our website. So we have to handle like SEO as developers like uh, manually and uh, this can soon like really daunting but it's actually like, I will, as we'll see like uh, later on it's not like uh, as complicated as it sounds. Yeah right uh, also I mentioned uh, I forgot to mention it at the beginning but if you have any question during this session uh, do not hesitate to ask it uh, directly in the chat uh, we'll have like a Q&A uh, by the end of the of this talk so we can uh, answer them at that moment. So uh, what you said uh, Lucy makes sense um, so having moving away from that monolithic uh, approach and going to something a bit more modular uh, is, is, is really uh, important now for developers. And this leads also to have the, the, the content that is not, not longer tied to, sorry, to the front. So um, one of the big things is where headless CMS has uh, come, is that you are going to have that content separated. And when you are working with a headless CMS, basically you will have to, work to, to choose a framework. And when choosing that framework, one really important thing is the rendering method of your frame framework. Um, there is uh, a, a, a huge uh, amount of, of developer using SPA today, but um, there is one problem with it. Uh, the fact that it's client, the, the most of SPA uh, framework are client-side rendered. Yeah, so basically like SPA is kind of like the default when we start when you start using like React, Vue or even Angular. Like uh, what SPA is, is that like when you gen when you build your app, it like it will give you like a, a simple like index.html file. You ship it like uh, on a CDN or something like that. And then like every client will uh, that we that it your website will download like, this index.html file and this index.html file will tell it tell him like what what it needs to do like to actually render the page is asking for. So this is great, but like the client has to do all the work of, of like figuring out like which route we are on, what content we need to display on this route and things like that. So this takes some time on the client side. And this is something that Google is really like not fond of because like uh, it then has like to run a lot of JavaScript in order to figure out like what your page is displaying. And while this is not like blocking to have SEO, this will considerably slow down like your um, time to SEO, let's say, uh, when you are deploying an SPA app uh, as a company website. Yeah, exactly. So, so what you said is that with this, um, with this uh, empty shell HTML, uh, basically we are making uh, the life of the search engine crawler a bit, a bit more complicated. Because what's happening is that when the, the crawler is going to, to come to your website, it's, it's going to see that, that empty file only with uh, one JS file uh, included. So it's going to take that, that website, put it in a queue, so that it, it can uh, browse it later and crawl it when the, the, the JavaScript uh, render the content. So basically, as I said, we are making the life of uh, the search engine crawler uh, difficult. And that's something that we don't really want to do as a, as a SEO and as developer when we want to, to optimize that. But the, the good news here is that uh, there are solutions to that. There are two big solutions. And, and the first one is server-side rendering. Yes. So server side rendering is basically like really similar to what we used to do in the past with the PHP website, for example. So what server side rendering is, is that uh, when someone like it's your website, your server like will 
understand its request, like figure out like which content it needs to display on this on this uh, request, and build like the markup on the server side. So in order like t this will be this will be done like in order to ship like uh, an actual an actual HTML page to the client, so the client has just like to read and understand HTML. So this please Google really well because Google has not JavaScript to run and it it's only need like to read through your HTML and understand what your page is about. So only like really small drawback to that is that uh, you have like to wait for the seller to actually like render your page and uh, ship it to the client, which is something that uh, can matter for our performances. And there's the last method that we'll talk about, which deals like with this uh, latency that is involved. Yes. So basically, here what's happening is that you have uh, your client browser who is going to 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 uh, to request the server, and the server is going to give back the HTML, CSS, and JS files. I directly uh, compute it. So this is pretty great. Uh, as you said, the problem is the is the performances here uh, because it can take some time uh, for the server to do that rendering. And also one thing about performances is that we obviously want to improve it for uh, the search engine because we want it uh, to, to see our website as fast and quick so that it can rank it well. But also uh, performances that we do for the, the search engine uh, crawler, we do it also for the, the users. So when we are working, toward having a, a better website is to have a better SEO, but also a better user experience. Um, so th the second option that you, you can take as a developer when uh, you want to work uh, with a single page application uh, and, and having having it uh, SEO friendly is going to, to use a static site generator, right? Yeah, so yeah, basically again, like what a static site generator is doing is that whenever there's a change to your content, it will like spin up a CI and like uh, rebuild your whole website uh, as a static like HTML file. And those static HTML file, you will be able like to ship them on a CDN to like in a, to being able like to distribute them like to every visitor of your website. This is really great because like every uh, like all the markup generation thing is doing like uh, prior to any request, so the client don't have to wait for anything like just like downloading the file actually. So this makes like the best of both world, let's say, to have like both performance so there's no lat latency, you only need like to ship um, the to, ch to ship like your, your page to the client and the client has already like pre-made HTML file. Yeah, so uh, this, is, this is a pretty great solution um, for SEO basically because you are really close from the clients, you are hosting uh, CSS, HTML and JS files. Uh, this is pretty easy also to host because you just have to drop it on any hosting platform like Netlify or Vercel. Then you serve it through a CDN and you have like uh, blazing fast performances, right? Yep. Um, but there is also one downside to this approach is it's the build time. Yeah, well, build time is like the only like drawback of do having like a statically generated website. The, f the issue with uh, build time is that it can like it can take like really a while for some website. Like if your website is really big, is multi is a multilingual website or something like that, it can take like up to an hour like to build your website whenever like you change a typo on, on the home page, which is annoying because like you want like to deliver your uh, update of your website like really quickly. Thankfully, like there's more and more solutions like to mitigate that and to have like a really uh, short build time and there's even like really innovative solution like for WordPress for example uh, no actually not for WordPress <laughs> with Vercel like uh, if you are using Next.js yes, there's like really great optimization like with incremental static generations which allows you like to only like build like one page at a time whenever like there's a change to it so you like uh, never end up like with a really heavy build time. Awesome. So yeah, to, to maybe uh, recap this, so we have SSR, uh, so server-side rendering. This is pretty great for a website with highly dynamic content, so if the, the content is changing a lot, this is maybe the, the best solution that we can uh, recommend. And the second one, static site generation, maybe more suited for more static content, so websites with less uh, updates on the content, so that you don't have to run a, a lot of builds and use, uh, and use resources to, to deploy everything. So that th these are the, the, the best two, two solutions to, to do SEO with modern day uh, framework. And, uh, and, and yeah, the good news is, is if you, you like uh, Vue, uh, we have Next.js that is uh, providing uh, SSR and SSG. And same for React uh, developer. If, you, if you're into React, we have uh, Next.js and also Gatsby who do that kind of, uh, of rendering.